We're on call with the West Midlands Ambulance Service, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. Jan alone can do 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day, and a new case is just in. We've just received a call about a 75-year-old man who's fallen over and hurt his shoulder. So, of course, we need to assess that shoulder injury. We also need to work out why did he fall. I've got my ouch can here. Eric in the back has his big camera. And we're going to get you right up so you can find out what it's like to be first on scene. We quickly arrive and head inside to see Gerard, who's with his family. My name's Jan. What's happened? He fell out of bed this morning. OK. He was only let out of hospital yesterday. OK. You've landed on your shoulder. Yeah. Can I have a quick feel? Is that OK? OK. No so... pain when I'm pressing down your back? No. No. So your neck and your back are fine. Can you bring your head and look over your shoulder for me? So Gerard's just come out of hospital, so he really doesn't want to go back in. One of the main valuable things that Jan can do here is assess Gerard, make sure that he's safe, and most importantly, she's checking his nerves, and his bones and his muscles to make sure that they're all working well after that fall. Are you able to move that shoulder? Yeah. After Jan is happy that Gerard's shoulder's OK, she does some tests to try and find out what caused his fall. So Jan's doing Gerard's observations, and these are the really important numbers that tell us how sick or well someone is. Temperature, blood pressure and pulse. Oh, just double-check your blood pressure when you stood up, if that's OK. It's got a history in the past of postural hypotension. Um, postural hypertension is whenever you stand up, your blood pressure drops, and it can cause you to pass out. So that drop in blood pressure can mean not enough blood gets to the brain and he faints. And you might have felt the same thing if you've been lying down very sleepily and then you stand up quickly, you can feel a bit dizzy. And in some older people, that can be more of a problem. So don't move, just stand where you are. That's good. Right then, sit down. How was that, Jan? That's good. It's gone up to 162.84. So that's all right? Yeah, so that's fine. Jan's happy that Gerard's postural hypotension is under control, so he won't need to be admitted to hospital. You can stay here and I can leave him in your capable hands. Mm -hmm. Well, Gerard, thank you very, very much, and I'm pleased, very pleased to get to stay out of hospital. Thank you. In a sense, one of the most valuable things that Jan can do is keep people out of hospital. Yes, a lot of the time, she fixes them up, ready for the ambulance to take them in and be properly treated, but actually, we've done an amazing thing here. She's just made Gerard feel better and he can stay at home and enjoy an evening with his family. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services. If you have an accident, an emergency service like this won't be far away. In the West Midlands, there are over 3,000 emergency calls per day, and this is one of the high-tech vehicles that responds to them. Today, I'm going along for the ride. If you have an accident, this fast medical service is ready to help 24 hours a day. We never quite know what we're going to find, so I've got my camera with me, and of course we've got Eric in the back, so we're going to get as close as we can and find out what's going on. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. And a new case has come in. So we've just got a call about an 85-year-old man with chest pain. Sounds like he was unconscious, but he's awake again. So we're going to get there and see exactly what's happening. We get there quickly, grab the gear and head in to find the patient, Eric. Hello. Hiya. Eric, do you get this pain often? I've never had it like that before. Because Eric is experiencing a severe chest pain, Jan immediately hooks him up to a specialist piece of equipment. So Jan's just doing an electrocardiogram, so she's doing a, a measurement of what's going on with Eric's heart. We've turned up and he's had chest pain and he collapsed and he's covered in sweat. And sometimes that can be a sign that someone's having a heart attack. The electrocardiogram analyses Eric's heart rhythm and lets Jan know if it's beating normally. OK, that's fine. What we need to do is we need to get you into hospital, get some blood tests done so they can check for some enzymes in your blood. Eric's in no immediate danger, as his heart rhythm is normal, but he needs further tests in hospital to see if he has actually had a heart attack. Now, I see this spray's with you. Have you been using that this morning? Yeah. Jan spotted some heart medicine spray that Eric's used twice today. That's probably what's caused you to collapse, because it drops your blood pressure, that spray. It looks, in this case, like, rather than having a heart attack or something really serious going on, it seems like he just had a bit too much of his heart medicine. So Jan seems to have solved Eric's problem. 
but the paramedics will still need to take Eric to hospital to be extra sure nothing is going on with his heart. The, one of the nicest things that Jan has done here is being able to turn up, reassure everyone, find what seems to be the real cause, and now we'll just take him to hospital, make sure that nothing more serious is going on and he can come back. All the best, Eric. And if you ever have an emergency, there are hundreds of similar crews around the country ready to help. Ready to see some amazing experiments? Yes! A triumph! We're going to show you how your incredible body works. <laughs> Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, we're looking at a pair of organs that really clean up. Chris, what are you doing? I'm cleaning and tidying the labs, aunt. I thought we had one of those self-cleaning laboratories. Would you like some orange juice? Oh, I'd love some. Yeah, it's thirsty work, this. Here you go. Thanks, Sand. Mm. <laughs> ah, it's got juicy bits in it! Ah. Now, Chris doesn't like bits in his orange juice any more than your body doesn't like bits or waste products in your bloodstream. And what your kidneys do is help to get rid of them. Now, I can remove the bits from the orange juice using this filter. Hey, that's my tea strainer. Whatever. It gets rid of all the little bits in the orange juice, just like your kidneys get rid of all the little bits from your blood that your body doesn't want. In 24 hours, your kidneys filter and clean 200 litres of blood. And it's even more amazing when you see what a real kidney looks like. Now, this pair is from a pig, but they're very similar to yours. It might look a bit gross, but your kidneys are amazing. This tube here is the main blood vessel carrying blood into the kidneys, full of waste, waiting to be removed. The blood gets filtered and another tube carries the waste, we, down to this sac here, which is your bladder. And your bladder empties when you go to the loo. And that's the pipe that takes away the cleaned up blood and sends it back around your body. Right, let's have a closer look. Scalpel, please, Dr Chris. Now, inside the kidney is where all this filtering takes place. There we go. This is done by a special thing called a nephron. There's about a million in each kidney, and they're so small you can't see them. So we've had to pay good money for this photo of one under a microscope. Chris, don't you just hate it when a bit of the body is so small that you can only see it with a microscope. I do, I do, I hate it. But, luckily, I've got just this eventuality covered. Ooh, come with me, Zand. Your kidneys are an amazing filtration system, and we're going to show you. To do it, I've made these. Two super-sized kidney models, one for me and one for you, Zand. These are great! Finally, a kidney model looks big enough to actually see what's going on. I love it! Yeah, I thought you'd like it. So, we're going to use our giant-sized models to show you just how your real-life kidneys clean your blood. Now, this jar represents a single nephron inside your kidneys. And just like in the real kidney, Chris has put a tube bringing blood into the nephron here, another tube bringing cleaned-up blood out of the kidney, and then a third tube taking the waste away. It's amazing! OK, well, uh, thanks, son. Now, the liquid that represents your blood is here. It's got water and red glitter in it for a bit of colour. Now, we're going to pump our very attractive glittery blood through our nephrons to give us an idea of how your kidney works in real life. Are you ready, Zahn? I'm ready, Chris. Let's go. And pump. So what you can see here is the glittery blood flowing into the nephron. And it gets filtered through the nephron and then the nice clean blood travels back along the renal vein, back to the body full of all the nice stuff your body wanted to keep. Uh, Chris! And everything else, the waste, comes out here. Chris! Out of the ureter and into the bladder. Chris! My urine's darker than yours. Oh, so it is. I must have given you the dehydrated kidney. I wanted to show everyone what happens if you don't drink enough water. Oh, I see. Clever. If your wee is dark in colour, like this, it's a pretty reliable sign that your body isn't getting enough water. Being dehydrated is not good for you. Your body works best when it has enough water. Light-coloured wee, like on my nicely working kidney, is a sign that you're well hydrated. 
So we've seen how your kidneys are an amazing filter, cleaning up your blood and getting rid of things your body doesn't need. And the wee they produce is a pretty good sign of whether you should be drinking more water. Light yellow wee is good. Speaking of drinking more, I'd like a glass of orange juice. Now, I have some oranges here for you to squeeze for me. OK, Zond. Wait a minute, he's forgotten the oranges. Chris, you've forgotten the oranges! We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. The West Midlands Ambulance Service is on standby all day, every day to respond to emergencies. I'm hitching a ride in this rapid response vehicle so you get to see up close what it's like to be first on the scene. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And a new case is just in. We've been called to see a 44-year-old lady, and at the moment, the suspected diagnosis is a stroke. And that means that she's potentially got a blocked blood vessel in her brain. If you act quickly, you can get a much better result than if you wait. So we need to get there fast. Minutes later, we arrive at the address. Inside, Jotty is in shock. She's lost feeling down one side of her body and has no idea why. And suddenly it started going all numb. On the, on the left side of your face, yeah. OK. And then I started going down, 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 and my husband pulled me back up. So you started slumping in the chair, did you? Yeah. I'm going to do a few checks on you. If it is something serious, like if it is a stroke, which obviously we're all concerned about, it can be managed and it can be treated, OK? So Jotty has high blood pressure and she's got diabetes. Normal, and both of you those things make having a stroke a little bit more likely. Can you feel me touching it? I feel that side. Can you not feel this side? Not much, no. So what Jan's doing now is assessing how well Jotty's nerves in the brain are working. Well, that will tell us whether or not there's a problem in her brain and how quickly she needs to get to hospital. This numbness in this side of the face is not normal. So I would like to get you checked over at the hospital just to make sure that it's not like the start of, of anything like a stroke. So one of the most difficult parts of Jan's job is not just making medical decisions, but also dealing with people, trying to persuade people who are frightened of hospitals that maybe it's a good idea to go in and to explain to people what's wrong and that's what she's doing there. What I'll do is I'll arrange for the ambulance to come, but I'm going to stay with you the whole time, OK? 5157, just amber back up, please. By the time the ambulance crew arrive... Hiya! Jotty's mood has lifted, thanks largely to the expert care she's received from Jan. She even manages a little joke. Why, why do you think you're feeling better? Do two handsome men like you. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, don't make Sorry. their heads any bigger than they already are. Are we going to the opticians? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. There we go. So Jotty's now in the ambulance and she's about to go to hospital where she'll get the treatment that she needs. She's laughing and joking, she's much more relaxed. It's a really good result for the emergency services. 